<clears throat> okay, no sir, no? So we can start um, <coughs> finish last time. <coughs> um, so the last um, um, concept I introduced was the cross pass switch. So we have seen that this is the simplest uh, streaking non blocking switching matrix, and uh, you can <coughs> the cross points are <coughs> the basic switching element that you have at uh, the intersection between the columns and the rows in the uh, crossbar. Crossbar can be uh, square or rectangle <coughs> and uh, we have seen that uh, when you set up multiple connections <coughs> you don't have any interference between the connections because uh, the number of uh, cross points inside the matrix is equal to n squared or uh, n uh, by n. So there is uh, uh, one switching, uh, one cross point dedicated to each connection. Um, the cross, cross points can be implemented also by using uh, the 2 by 2 switching elements uh, that we have already introduced uh, so far. Uh, for example, this way, if you have this is uh, the zoom over the uh, intersection between a column and uh, uh, a <coughs> row, and uh, so input, si oops. <coughs> input signals will arrive. <clears throat> from here from uh, the right side then when you have the switching the cross point the switching element in the cross state then the signal will uh, go through so you have you are for example in this situation here the signal coming from in the two is uh, going through uh, when you turn the switching element into the bar state, the signal will be sent on the, towards the top, like for example in this case. Okay. Um, if you have uh, inlets, in inlets on this side and outlets on this side, uh, you are using this uh, <coughs> matrix for uh, three-dimensional uh, connections. In principle, you could also uh, use uh, the other two sides in the other, uh, by creating bidirectional connections because you see that uh, uh, in this case, if you uh, send uh, uh, an input signal from this side, uh, then uh, you can uh, switch it on, on the right if you are using uh, the bar state. So when you are uh, using only one, two sides, one for inlets and one for outlets, uh, basically you are un underutilizing this uh, device. In principle, you can also use the other two sides. Uh, how, uh, however, for the purpose of this uh, course, we will always uh, consider new direction connections. So uh, when we are talking about, about crossbar, we are assuming that you are using only two uh, sides, the <coughs> left and the top one. <coughs> so the, the cost of it is uh, uh, complexity metric. Uh, is in this case, it can be calculated in terms of number of cross points, and it's uh, uh, n square. <coughs> uh, Usually, uh, these uh, crossbars uh, are implemented in a, 
the physical uh, uh, physical way by uh, for example uh, an electronic chip uh, so <coughs> all these uh, uh, cross points may be uh, logic ports that are uh, created over a chip and uh, uh, you can uh, of course uh, put a lot of uh, uh, transistors in a single chip as we know <coughs> but uh, in, in the end you will always have limitations in the size for example, in the area of the chip. It is uh, then uh, um, reflects also on a, on a uh, result in a limitation on uh, the number of units and the number of outlets. So it, when we have this limitation, uh, how can we overcome this constraint if we want to uh, scale uh, the overall size of the switching matrix? The idea is uh, to use uh, several crossbar as an elementary building block and uh, to build a, a larger architecture. And in this case, uh, we are talking about the so-called multi-stage network architecture. So in the multi-stage network architecture, uh, you have different uh, stages. Each stage is composed by uh, switching uh, matrices and matrices, matrices and the stages are then interconnected uh, each other by uh, a set of links okay. yeah, this is uh, uh, similar to what we have already explained in the simple case uh, uh, of uh, uh, the 4x4 four four switching matrix that I have already dis uh, described earlier <coughs> so in, in that case uh, that we saw uh, here you had directly uh, two by two switching elements uh, but you can imagine that you can increase the size of the metal switching elements by using cross parts mm -hmm. so in a um, in, in a multi-stage network you have uh, oh, uh, a certain number of stages usually stages are numbered from a start from one uh, to S to the number of, stage, of stages and uh, <clears throat> uh, each stage is composed by a certain number of uh, uh, switching matrices usually R is uh, the symbol that we use to, um, to number these uh, matrices in each stage so uh, for example in stage 1 you have matrices from 1 to R sub 1 each stage can have a different number of matrices, so this uh, R sub i is the parameter that you use in each stage, at stage i. And uh, also you have, to, um, uh, you, you have to give the uh, size of each elementary switching matrix in each stage. And this also can change from stage to stage. <coughs> so in the general stage i, you will have R sub i switching matrices. Each switching matrix, matrix is uh, n sub i by n sub i in size. Where here you use a small n and small n. Okay. <coughs> the total number of inlets of the global architecture is uh, uh, capital N. The total number of outlets capital M. Uh, and uh, when you are defining the interconnection pattern between one stage and the next stage, uh, of course you have to specify the type of pattern. This will, we will do uh, later on. Uh, however, in the general case, you have immediately one condition that uh, must be satisfied by each interstage link pattern. Uh, in the interesting case, uh, each uh, outlet of a stage must be connected to one inlet, one and only one inlet of the next stage. Okay, so if you take uh, <coughs> the total number of outlets of uh, stage I, this must be equal to the total number of inlets of stage 
i plus 1. So this means that uh, you have to uh, <coughs> comply to these conditions that uh, small mi uh, multiplied by uh, r sub i must be equal to small n i sub i plus 1 multiplied by r sub i plus 1. Very good. State interstage links are fixed, so you cannot uh, change uh, uh, the link pattern uh, once uh, the network is uh, active. So what you can only change is, is the state of uh, the switching matrices in each stage. <coughs> uh, one more observation. Uh, when uh, we want to uh, build a um, multi-stage network with a given blocking property, it's quite convenient that we can assume that each of the elementary switching matrices is strictly non-blocking. If you have strictly non-blocking components, then it is quite easy to uh, design the overall architecture so that it is uh, rearrangeable non-blocking or strictly non-blocking or what you want. <coughs> Do you have questions so far of, uh, about what I, we have introduced? Um, there is a, uh, a way to describe, in a mathematical way, the interstage uh, uh, link pattern uh, with the formulation that is quite general. And uh, by this formulation, uh, you can basically <coughs> describe all the subcases, the specific patterns that uh, are useful when you are building multi-stage network. And uh, this is uh, called uh, extended generalized shuffle. Uh, shuffle means uh, uh, to mix together uh, elements, like uh, when you are shuffling a deck of cards. And in fact, you can see from the picture that uh, uh, these uh, the interstage links usually mix together the different uh, uh, <coughs> outlets uh, and uh, uh, to, to be connected to specific uh, uh, inlets of the next stage. So this is uh, the EGS, Extended Generalized uh, uh, Pattern. Uh, in order to describe it uh, mathematically, we have to introduce uh, some uh, uh, symbols. So usually uh, uh, an uh, outlet. Uh, so let's take a stage i and uh, the next stage, which is i plus 1. So the generic outlet in stage i is uh, uh, represented by the symbol j. And... Uh, uh, when uh, you are also, since you are, we are considering stages that are uh, made up of uh, uh, um, switching matrices, uh, in order to locate a specific uh, uh, outlet, you have to specify the matrix to which the outlet belongs and uh, the position of, of the outlet in, in this matrix. Uh, so, each uh, outlet in stage i is identified by a pair of symbols, j sub i and t sub i. t sub i is the switching matrix, <coughs> and j sub i is the position of the outlet in that uh, switching matrix. Okay. The same applies to identify the inlet of the next stage. Okay. The symbol now we use is... Uh, uh, j sub i plus 1 and t sub i plus 1, so that the pair j sub i plus 1 and t sub i plus 1 identifies <coughs> a specific uh, inlet in stage i plus 1 that belongs to a specific matrix of that <coughs> stage. It's quite simple. Uh, so, once we said that, <coughs> um, the, we, can, we can look at the, the, uh, the, this uh, expression that uh, provides a descri mathematical description of the shuffling function performed by this specific uh, uh, <coughs> pattern. 
So the outlets of uh, stage I are orderly distributed or shuffled to be connected to the inlets of the next stage. And uh, obviously we have to consider that uh, uh, the matrices of uh, stage I have uh, a fixed number of uh, outlets per matrix, which is m, small m sub i, and the inlets of stage i plus 1 have uh, um, maybe grouped in groups of uh, uh, n sub uh, one, uh, i plus 1 inlets, okay? because these matrices have, each of these matrices have, uh, has uh, n sub i plus 1 inlets. Um, then, matrices of stage uh, uh, i are uh, total R sub i, matrices of stage i plus 1 are R sub i plus 1. <coughs> um, obviously, in order to simplify uh, our um, <coughs> theory, we assume that the matrices in each stage are identical. Okay, so the columns that you see here uh, are composed of identical matrices. So um, you can observe that uh, uh, n sub i plus 1, which is the number of inlets in the next stage, must be equal to that expression. So n sub uh, i <coughs> divided by r sub i plus 1 multiplied by r sub i. <coughs> and this is because uh, we, have, we, we have to introduce the balance between the number of inlets, the outlets, and the number of total number of outlets here and total number of inlets uh, on uh, this other side. In, in fact, that expression that you see above is exactly the same that we have uh, written here. <laughs> So in order to describe the type of the specific type of pattern that we want to uh, design, uh, the main parameter is uh, this uh, ratio. It's uh, the number of m, so m, m sub i divided by r sub i plus 1. So the number of uh, uh, outlets of uh, this stage, of the matrix of this stage, divided by the number of uh, matrices on the next stage. And in fact, you see that in these expressions, uh, you find the same uh, ratio directly in uh, here as an argument, and also a little bit uh, modified, but uh, again, uh, uh, still the ratio in uh, the second expression. These two expressions uh, provide the specific. Uh, yeah coordinate of the uh, outlet that is connected in uh, stage uh, I plus 1 that is connected to a specific inlet of stage, sorry, the specific uh, uh, inlet of stage uh, I plus 1 connected to the outlet of stage I. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, if you take it in the outlet of stage I, <laughs> Uh, this is given by T sub i and J sub i that we find here in the argument of these uh, two expressions. Then, uh, by these two expressions, you can uh, uh, know what is the inlet of the next stage that is connected to that outlet. And uh, if you notice here that there is uh, uh, an integer uh, function and uh, uh, modular division, uh, this gives you the type of, uh, 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 let's say, cyclical behavior of this shuffling operation. Moreover, this ratio is useful to understand if the con uh, a matrix that is uh, in uh, stage I is connected to all the matrices of the next stage or just a subset. And this, as we will see, it's quite important to, uh, the, to understand the property of the uh, uh, overall
overall multi-stage architecture that you want to design. So in this specific case that is represented in the picture, um, we are uh, in the case where uh, m sub i is less than r sub i plus 1. This means that uh, the number of outlets uh, of each matrix of this stage is less than the number of matrices of the next stage. So since here we are shuffling, so distributing the outlets of a, uh, a matrix of this stage over the matrices of the next stage, this means that uh, um, each uh, matrix of this stage is connected only to a subset of the matrices of the next stage. Okay? If this ratio changes, so in, this ratio here changes now it's less than one. If it became, uh, becomes uh, 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 more than one, it means that uh, uh, all, the, matrix, all uh, the matrices of this stage are connected to each matrix of the previous stage. Okay. Then we will see later on uh, <coughs> some uh, examples. So just this is a. Uh, quite uh, uh, complicated to read, but uh, the function that uh, is performed is relatively simple. Um, in order to introduce uh, uh, some more concept, we have uh, now some uh, uh, equivalence relations uh, that are useful to compare different network architectures. Uh, and mean more precisely to understand if uh, uh, two network architectures have uh, common properties or not. <coughs> and uh, so we are talking about uh, network equivalence. Before going into, uh, directly into the uh, interconnection networks, <coughs> we, um, we have to recall the concept about graphs. Uh, a graph is uh, a set of nodes that are mutually related by edges or connected by edges, as you know. We call isomorphism between uh, two graphs a property uh, by which we can <coughs> um, set an equivalent or understand if there is an equivalence between two graphs. And uh, <coughs> uh, more precisely, Two graphs are uh, uh, isomorphic if we can uh, move the nodes of one graph to obtain a topology that is uh, similar to uh, the other graph. Uh, so the nodes are in the same position and uh, connected in the same way. Usually nodes are labeled, so you have uh, an identifier for each node. Um, if two graphs are isomorphic, they have the same topology, but maybe you have to relabel the nodes in order to <coughs> uh, pass from one graph to another. So, for example, in this case, um, if we want to, to understand if uh, A is uh, isomorphic with B, we take A and first uh, we move the nodes so that the topology is uh, the same as in, the, in B. Um, we obtain an intermediate graph that is A uh, prime, which has the same uh, topology as B, but uh, uh, nodes are, have uh, different labels. So nodes in the same position have different, may have different labels. For example, here we have uh, node 2 in A prime, and uh, in uh, B, you have uh, the same position, no three. Okay. <coughs> so part of the final part of the isomorphism is to uh, map the labels of the nodes in the same position in the two graphs. So this is uh, basically the labeling that you must be, you must do to uh, transform A into B. Okay. So first you have to move the nodes, and then you have to relabel the nodes. Why uh, we need this concept about graphs? 
because in uh, multi-stage networks, we can uh, um, use uh, uh, the, the concept of graphs to describe of the topology properties of uh, these networks. So in the multi-stage network, we have a set of matrices interconnected by links, as we have already <coughs> seen in the previous uh, example. Uh, the underlying graph of a multi-stage network is uh, the graph that is obtained when matrices are mapped into nodes, are represented like nodes, and the links are represented like edges. And we can say that two networks are topologically equivalent if the two underlying graphs are isomorphic. Okay. This is uh, the main uh, relation. Okay. Um, an example just to show you immediately. Okay, Nina. So take this network. Uh, this is a network with the matrices uh, X, uh, uh, Y, Z, W. The underlying graph of it in this network is uh, So this network, for example, is topologically equivalent. This is network B. To this other network. The underlying graph of this network is the same. So we have a logical idea. If you put, uh, um, if you change the, 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 the pattern of the inlets and outlets, for example, <coughs> inserting uh, interstage links uh, before the inlets and after the outlets, this uh, uh, has no impact on the underlying graph. Because you are not adding other switch matrices, so you are not adding other nodes. <coughs> and uh, let's say that you change the labels. Okay. Again, you have. Uh, this is the topological equivalent to the, the previous uh, network because you have the same topology. The labels, the uh, labels of the matrices have been uh, changed, but uh, uh, then you can uh, map uh, the labels uh, in the two cases. Uh, for example, here y becomes uh, w becomes x. Uh, then uh, x uh, responds to uh, y, and y corresponds to z, z responds to w. Okay. So this is just to show that uh, 
to have a, a then there is another uh, relation between two uh, networks that is the functional equivalence two networks are defined to be functionally equivalent if they perform the same set of permutations so uh, now here you are looking at uh, the inner st structure, the inner architecture inside the switching matrix. Um, here you are looking at uh, the end-to-end uh, -end functionality. What kind of permutations you, you can implement uh, leading from the per connecting the uh, inlet of the whole multi-stage network with the outlets of the whole multi-stage network. Uh, this is another example, it's quite simple. Uh, these are two networks, and uh, again they are topologically equivalent because the graph, <coughs> the underlying graph of the two networks is the same. Uh, and uh, also you have a different labeling in the um, of the matrices, of the switching matrices, but there is a, uh, a correspondence between the labels in A and the labels in B. Okay. These matrices are also uh, topologically equivalent, so A prime and uh, uh, A primes are equivalent to B because they have the same underlying graph and you can map uh, relabel the, the matrices so if you want to describe uh, how you can uh, change the topology uh, to prove that uh, the two underlying graphs of A prime and B, and B are the same for example if you take A prime uh, you move uh, i up and uh, j up and h down and you obtain the same topology as b. Okay. And similarly for uh, if, uh, this other case. Um, in the uh, slide set of uh, the last year, uh, there was uh, another relation that I removed because it was uh, too complicated. Uh, it was called isomorphic, uh, isomorphism between uh, the networks, that is different from isomorphism between graphs. Uh, when you are talking about isomorphism between the networks, you have also to take care of the labeling of the inlets and outlets of each switching matrix. This is why we are defined 0, 1. Okay. <coughs> but uh, since uh, uh, I wanted to simplify, we don't consider that property. So basically, you can ignore the labeling of the inlets and the, the outlets. You can see that uh, um, here you have the topological equivalence but you don't have functional equivalence. So two topological equivalent networks are not necessarily functionally equivalent. In fact, if you take the, these networks, uh, A and A prime and B, and uh, also A second and B, uh, and uh, we write the labels of the global inlets and the global outlets, the two networks above are able to perform, uh, to set up these two connections, so from uh, 0 to, uh, to 0 and from 1 to 1, you can set up uh, uh, these two connections both in A prime and A second. Uh, the same is not true for B. Okay. In B, there is no way to set up 0, uh, zero and 1, 1. Okay. So they are functionally, uh, not, they are not functionally equivalent, um, even if they are to, uh, topologically equivalent. equivalent.
topological equivalent networks obviously have uh, the same number of matrices because their graphs uh, uh, are isomorphic. Um, in this case, we have uh, two topologically equivalent networks that are also functionally equivalent. Uh, these two networks are um, similar to um, the ones that I showed you uh, as an example of uh, uh, rearrangeable non blocking networks. Uh, the only difference between what we have seen in the, the previous lesson is that here you have a missing switching element. Okay. You have uh, <coughs> only uh, uh, five switching elements, uh, two by two switching elements instead of uh, six. Uh, but it can be proved, it has been proved uh, with uh, a specific theorem that. Uh, um, uh, these two networks are still rearrangeable non block So when you are using six uh, switching elements, actually, that is not the um, implementation with minimum cost. You can remove one switching element and obtain the same uh, uh, network. So these two networks are rearrangeable <laughs> non blocking, therefore, they are also non blocking, of course. And uh, <clears throat> By definition, when you have two non-blocking networks with the same size, uh, both of them are able to set up all the possible permutations. Okay? So you have uh, n factorial permutations uh, that are possible in A and n factorial that are possible in B. Therefore, these two networks are uh, functionally equivalent. Because, uh, by definition of non-blocking networks, they can set up all the possible permutations, and two functional equivalent networks can set up the same set of permutations. Okay. So this set is complete in both cases, so it's the same. <coughs> in order to prove that uh, uh, they are topologically equivalent, it's very easy, just... Uh, move uh, n down uh, and uh, actually if you move uh, from here l down then uh, you have to rearrange uh, the, uh, the connection needs to have the same topology uh, so you have also to flip these two networks uh, p and j by flipping i mean that i can disconnect the networks from the index and turn it around so just to show you <coughs> the two steps. So this is a factor A. <coughs> So the first step is to move L down. So now L is here. So this goes this way. That was the top. This is the first uh, transformation. So now you can see that uh, we have changed uh, this pattern. If we want to uh, put uh, the things in the correct order, uh, here we can flip these two matrices. 
when we flip the matrices, we have to identify the outlets. So here I number the outlets in this way, 0, 1, 0, 1. When I flip a matrix, I can disconnect it from the index. So the index remains the same. So this will be J flip, so with 1 on the top and 0 on the bottom. And I flip also E. I can disconnect the index, but the address remains connected. Remain connected. So this implies that uh, now we have one that goes straight, uh, zero that goes down, and uh, is connected to the end. In the goes straight, and one goes up. Okay. So now we have almost the same architecture as B. We have the same topology. And the last uh, step is uh, mapping the labels of the matrices. So H is H prime, <coughs> I is I prime, J is J prime, so on. Okay. Um, however, when you, this is uh, useful, especially when you are considering the isomorphism between networks, so uh, uh, when you are also taking care about uh, the outlets, uh, in terms of underlying graph, you even don't need to do, to do this operation because the graph here, the underlying graph here is uh, this one. Which is exactly the same of this. So the rearrangement is only required if you want to go deeper into the architecture, but uh, in order to show that they are uh, topologically equivalent, uh, you even don't need to flip the matrices. Okay. <coughs> This is about uh, uh, the relation between uh, networks that in some cases is a useful tool for, uh, to perform uh, an analysis of the properties. Um, another concept is uh, the channel graph. Uh, we have already introduced it uh, in an informal way when I talk about uh, the possible paths between uh, inlets and outlets. Uh, so, the channel graph is uh, a graph that is uh, associated to each uh, in input-output pair, or inlet-output pair, and it represents all the paths that are possible to connect uh, an inlet to a specific outlet. And again, in this graph, the nodes correspond to the matrices of uh, the multi-stage architecture, and the edge state of stage leads. So uh, the channel graph uh, shows for a given path between an inlet and outlet what are the internal switching matrices that are crossed by that path and what are the links, the internal links that are crossed by that path. Uh, obviously, if the network is uh, regular, so the structure is uh, completely symmetrical. <coughs> um, you just need to identify a channel graph for a pair uh, of inlets and outlets, and then it would be the same for all the pairs. In this case, the network is not uh, completely symmetrical because you can see that here we have this uh, difference in the last stage. And uh, in fact, uh, the channel graph is different according to uh, which uh, uh, input and output pair you are considering. Uh, in this previous example, <coughs> uh, inlets were numbered, were labeled uh, uh, 
in this way. So you had uh, this A, B, C, D, and the Y, X, uh, W, Z. Actually, I know was the, the top one. Sorry. So the example is for the matrix A. So A, B, C, D, and uh, E, F, G, H. Okay. So, for example, if we take the pair um, E, A, E, it is here, and uh, uh, we take the, the termination E, it is here, and we try to connect it to, uh, for example, uh, inlet A, that is here. We have two paths. One is this, and the other one is this. So the, the channel graph corresponding to uh, the pair A E. Because here you have uh, uh, this matrix, then these two are the matrices that are in alternative, and then the last one. The same is uh, if we take out the F and any of the inlets, and also out the E and any other of the inlets of B, C, and D. Uh, if we take for, uh, instead uh, uh, out the G, uh, and we try to connect out the <coughs> for example, with inlet A. Here we have only one possible path, that is this one. Okay, no other possibility. And the same if we want to connect the G with uh, any other inlet, uh, same with B, C, and D. And uh, you have only two matrices that are crossed by the path. So the channel graph is this. What you see here below. As we have seen in uh, the simple examples uh, below, the more paths you have available to connect an inlet with an outlet, the better are blocking properties of the uh, of the multi-stage uh, matrix or of the interconnection matrix. So if you want to increase blocking properties, for example, going from gradual uh, uh, non-blocking to strict non-blocking, the usual uh, method is to increase the number of paths, the possible paths, so to increase the topology uh, of the channel graph. More complicated. Questions? So now we can uh, uh, switch to uh, the implementation of uh, uh, other network architectures <coughs> based on uh, elementary components. Um, so we have seen uh, the crossbar. Now we are going to to see how we can implement uh, uh, switching networks on, with different uh, topologies. And uh, the basic uh, 
elements that we are considering uh, are the crossbar networks that can be used as uh, switching matrices in inside the multi-stage architecture of size n by n and the smallest possible is uh, the 2 by 2 uh, switching element which is the crossbar, so-called crossbar switching element. Uh, then we have uh, two other components or elements called the splitter and combiner. Actually, the splitter and the combiner are two special cases of uh, an n by n network, an n, n, by, uh, n by m network. Uh, so they are basically you can represent them as a, a block, as the n by n. Uh, but the so uh, here we have n n. But in the case of the splitter, n is equal to one. And in the case of the combiner, n is equal to one. The simplest uh, version of these two elements, the splitter and combiners, uh, are the 1 by 2 and the 2 by 1 elementary switching elements. And usually the combiner is, and the splitter are represented as uh, triangles. This is uh, actually a splitter. And this is the combiner. Uh, the two names, uh, splitter and combiner, uh, may be confusing. We are not talking about, uh, uh, for example, an optical splitter that takes uh, a signal and replicates it on many, on many <coughs> replicates it on many outputs. We are still speaking about uh, switching matrices where we don't have collision and uh, uh, splitting of the channel. So in the uh, split and, and in the compiler, you will have only one possible connection active uh, at the same time. Okay. For example, in the splitter, there will be one connection coming from the input, and the splitter simply make, uh, makes the function of selecting which of the outputs uh, has to be used to send this connection. In the combiner, you have uh, many inlets, a single outlet, uh, only one of these inlets can be active. You cannot have two signals arriving to, to, uh, to busy inlets in the combiner because otherwise they are collision. So even if it is called combiner, actually, it only takes one connection at a time. Uh, so, in order to evaluate the complexity of the network, we have already introduced uh, the first metric, which is uh, the number of cross points. Uh, the cross points are defined um, in the, uh, by re uh, relating to the basic crossbar that we have already introduced. And uh, so, in a, an n by n network, you have to think it as uh, implemented uh, with the crossbar architecture, you will have uh, n by m cross points. Okay. This is one cross point. But there is another possible metric that can be uh, useful as well, that is the number of elementary switching elements that are composing the network. By elementary switching element, we mean the 2 by 2, 1 by 2, and 2 by 1. These are two metrics that can be used uh, uh, in alternative. Uh, so, in the network that uh, we will see, the architectures we will see, we, we will give, we will provide the complexity in terms of number of cross points and also in terms of number of elementary uh, switching elements.
and sometimes uh, uh, these two metrics uh, give different results. So let us uh, start with uh, um, the, ba uh, basic, uh, the ba basic element uh, uh, of the splitter. Uh, so the splitter is a uh, 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 1 by n uh, um, switching matrix. How can it be implemented internally? Uh, so this is uh, uh, a way to understand what is uh, the cost of uh, 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 the elemental splitter element in terms of number of cross points or number of switching elements. Um, we can describe this uh, uh, switching matrix uh, in two ways. One is uh, in order to understand the number of uh, cross points and the other one in order to count the number of switching elements. And when we are thinking of a, a splitter implemented with the cross points, we can uh, refer to this uh, internal architecture, which is actually a piece of a crossbar. Okay. Here you have a single inlet, so it means a single column, multiple outlets, so multiple rows. At the intersection <coughs> of each call of each row with, with a single column. We have a cross point. So this is basically uh, what you obtain if you take a crossbar and you cut it, uh, <coughs> taking only one piece corresponding to a column. So the number, by looking at this picture, it is quite clear that the number of cross points is exactly n, if you have n outlets. This is a possible implementation, but we can also implement uh, the splitter using elementary splitters, that is one by two uh, switching elements. Uh, this is uh, useful, especially if you have uh, a number of inlets uh, of outlets that is uh, an integer power of two. And so n, in this case, uh, should be two power x, where x is a, uh, an integer number. So the architecture that uh, you can use is the tree, binary tree actually. <coughs> and uh, how many stages you have to provide here? The number of stages is uh, equal to the uh, log 2 n of n. Uh, and you can easily see by <coughs> considering this example. So you have eight outlets, three stages. Each time you add a stage, you are doubling the number of outlets. How many switching elements uh, you need to use? Uh, in the first stage, you need just uh, one switching element. In the second stage, you need two. The third stage, you need four. So in each stage, you need uh, 2 to the i, power i, where i goes to 0, from 0 to the number of stage minus 1. Okay. So here, uh, s is in the number of stages uh, log 2n. Uh, so if you uh, uh, use an index that goes from 0 to uh, Log, log 2n minus 1, then uh, you can describe the number of uh, switching elements in each stage with 2 power i. Okay. This sum can be solved for uh, any uh, value of n, and the result is n minus 1. This is a, a simple uh, application of a series. So the cost of a, a, a 1 by n split in terms of number of cross points is n, in terms of number of elementary switching elements is n minus 1. Uh, then you can also build uh, uh, uncomplete binary splitters using uh, elementary 1 by 2 switching elements, uh, but in that case you will not have the, <coughs> the complete tree. You will have only some branches of the tree. Um, 
So when you are counting the number of uh, uh, switching elements, switching elements, uh, you don't have an easy relation like that. You have to consider specific uh, cases. Um, the same, of course, applies if you uh, are considering a combiner instead of a splitter. So I'm not going to repeat, but uh, you can apply exactly the same uh, conditions. So now we have uh, described uh, these uh, uh, splitters and combiners uh, as uh, basic building blocks. How can we use them to uh, build uh, multi-stage architectures? And uh, the first application is the so-called crossbar tree. The crossbar tree is a, a network that is uh, uh, like that, as you can see in the picture. And um, if we are referring to uh, an n by n uh, architecture, you, are use, you have to use two stages, one of splitters and one of combiners. Uh, in each stage, you have uh, n splitters and n combiners, and the splitting factor and the combining factor is equal to n. Okay? So the splitters in the first stage are 1 by n, combiners in the last stage are n by 1. This is a fully connected network. We will uh, go back to this definition later on. It means that each matrix of the first stage, that is in this case a splitter, is connected to all the matrices in the second stage. Okay. So interstage uh, pattern uh, is, uh, in this case, quite simple. You take the first uh, inlet of the first uh, splitter and you connect it to the first uh, combiner, second inlet, sorry, sec uh, first outlet, second outlet, second combiner, and so on and so forth until you go to the uh, outlet N that is connected to combiner N. Okay. Yeah. Um, this network is functionally equivalent to a crossbar uh, because it's a, a non-blocking network. Moreover, it's also strictly non-blocking. Why uh, is strictly non-blocking? Um, here we can explain uh, this property by looking at the architecture directly, so by inspection. If you take uh, an inlet outlet pair, for example, 0 and uh, 1, you see that uh, the path from 0 to 1 crosses elements that are all dedicated to that specific connection. Because <coughs> the, first, uh, uh, the first splitter that is uh, connected only to inlet 0 is of course dedicated because it's connected only to uh, inlet 0. <coughs> the combiner you are reaching is connected only to outlet 1, which is the outlet that we want to connect. So it's dedicated to that uh, uh, outlet. And uh, the interstage link between uh, these two elements, so the splitter and the combiner, will be used only by that pair of connections, uh, that pair of uh, uh, inlet outlet. It cannot be used by any other connection. Okay? So when you set up the connection between 0 and 1, you have a dedicated uh, interstage link that is dedicated only to that connection. So all the other connections will never interfere. So you cannot have any blocking state, internal blocking state. Okay. No matter what is the state of the other connections. So this is why it is non-blocking and also strict the sense non-blocking. What is the cost of this architecture? Um, here we have uh, uh, two stages. And so uh, in terms of uh, uh, crossing uh, of cross points, uh, you only have to consider two stages. In the first stage, you have uh, 
uh, n uh, elements, and each element has a cost equal to n, so n cross points. And so finally, you have 2 by n squares cross points. It's the double of the cost of the crossbar. But um, here you have implemented it as, as a two stage network. So, in some cases, it may have uh, advantages. What is the cost in terms of number of switching elements? Uh, here you have two stages. Uh, each stage uh, has, uh, contains a uh, uh, binary tree uh, that is uh, with uh, log 2n stages. And uh, so if you replace the equation that we have uh, seen in the previous slide, you obtain this result. In terms of the number of switching elements, the cost is 2n squared minus 2n. This is a picture that shows you <coughs> a complete implementation of uh, the binary tree using uh, uh, elementary splitters and combiners. So we have this architecture that is a possible uh, alternative implementation compared to the, uh, the crossbar. Uh, now we can uh, think of other possibilities. Uh, for example, uh, with the multi-stage approach, we can also build um, the, these uh, uh, networks that, have, uh, that are actually rectangular. Uh, for instance, here you have uh, n inlets and uh, two n outlets. Um, and this can be built by two stages. The first stage is uh, splitters. The second stage is of switching matrices. So in the second stage, you use uh, square switching matrices, and size uh, n, by, uh, n by n. In the first stage, you use one by two splitters. Uh, so in the second stage, you have only two switching matrices. In the first stage, you take uh, uh, each inlet, and uh, basically these uh, splitters decide <coughs> For this inlet, you are using the top matrix or the bottom matrix. Okay. And this concept can be uh, extended and uh, uh, if you want to build a network that is uh, n by key by n, so you have uh, n inlets and key by n outlets, you can do the same simply using in the first stage one by key switching uh, splitters. Okay. And then uh, below you find all the <coughs> uh, equations that tells you what is the cost uh, in terms of number of switching elements or number of cross points of these two uh, constructions. So these networks are not necessarily uh, useful by <coughs> themselves, but they can be used to create uh, other architectures combined in the, uh, with other stages. Uh, the first stage is called the expansion stage because uh, you are uh, basically expanding the set of inlets on a wider set of uh, uh, links. Um, and uh, these calculations are based on the assumption that uh, the matrices in the second stage are n by n crossed by trees. Okay. So um, here, when you are in order to obtain these uh, calculations, you have to um, use the cost of the n by n crossbar tree instead of the n by n crossbar. So, if we want to um, <coughs> build a network in a more complicated way, we can now apply the two concepts of uh, uh, functional equivalence and isomorphism. Let's uh, start with a simple example. This is a 4x4 four four network. Uh, assuming that it is uh, 
that we want it uh, as a strip be uh, no blocking, let's say. We can build it internally in different ways. If we are able to set up a uh, set of connections that uh, ensures that you can do and you can perform all the um, permutations, then you have a functionally equivalent uh, implementation. So this network can be implemented, for example, internally in this way. Now, if we take the 2 by 4 blocks you have here in the first stage, these 2 by 4 blocks are uh, exactly in the case of uh, uh, a network with the expansion that we have seen in the previous slide. So we can implement each 2 by 4 using the splitter stage and the 2 by 2 stage. So now uh, we can take this block and replace it in the first uh, architecture. We come out with this network. Uh, here you have uh, an end by end network with three stages. Um, this uh, um, um, interconnection pattern is different from the first one, but we can apply the isomorphism and the equivalence to. Uh, comes out with a topology equivalent uh, implementation that has, uh, is very similar to the previous one, in identical in terms of switching matrices, but we have changed the interconnection factor, basically by moving the switching matrices in the first stage, as you can see. So this final network that we obtain is called the EGS network. Okay. EGS networks are uh, characterized by three stages. The central stage is made by two by two switching elements. And uh, the two interconnection patterns can be described by the EGS formulation that we have seen uh, previously. Okay. So this uh, uh, EGS network is uh, an, an, another possible implementation of the <coughs> strictly non-blocking n by n network. So we have another implementation uh, that is equivalent to the crossbar, but with uh, an extra stage, an intermediate stage. And uh, here, in this case, is the intermediate stage is made by two by two switching elements. But we can generalize this. Okay. These are AGS patterns. So this is uh, the crossbar tree with an intermediate stage. If we take, uh, for example, an 8 by 8 uh, overall network, this implementation has a central stage of 2 by 2 switching elements, and therefore is an EGS network. But we are not obliged to use uh, 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 the central stage of 2 by 2 switching elements, we can uh, use uh, other matrices as central stage. And so this is an intermediate case where you have a central stage of a different size. How can we obtain uh, uh, this network? Uh, basically, we have uh, uh, splitters in the first stage and combiners in the last stage. In the general case, the splitting factor is a key that uh, must be less than n. If the splitting factor is uh, equal to n, then we uh, go back to the uh, crossbar tree case and uh, the central stage disappears. Okay? But here we, we can use a splitting factor that is less than n. For example, in this case, the splitting factor is 2. Uh, and uh, in this case, the splitting factor is 4. Okay. So if we are given the splitting factor, maybe, for example, if we have limitations in the size of splitters and combiners, how can we decide design the central stage? Okay, first of all, 
if you have a splitting factor that is less than n, it means that uh, each uh, uh, split in the first stage is connected to a subset of the matrices in the central stage. Not all the matrices in the central stage. Um, but we have to guarantee full accessibility. So we must guarantee that from each inlet we are able to connect each outlet of the net. So when we have a, a splitting factor of t, it means that we can reach the, a number of uh, uh, matrices in the central stage that is equal to t. From, so we have uh, connected a pool of matrices here to a specific inlet. Okay? But from the inlet, we want to go possibly to each outlet. So this pool of matrices that is connected to the inlet must be able to be connected to all the outlets. <coughs> so um, we have key matrices in the central stage. They must be connected to n outlets in the last stage. How many uh, outlets we, we must have uh, in the central stage for each matrix. Uh, of course, we need uh, n divided by t outlets. Okay. If we have n divided by t outlets of each matrix in the central stage, the pool of matrices that is connected to a specific inlet is connected to all the outlets. For example, here we will have uh, when uh, uh, n is equal to 8 and the key is equal to 4, we need 4 by 4 matrices in the central stage. When n is equal to 8 and t is 4, we need 2 by 2 matrices in the central stage. How many matrices we need in the central stage? Okay, the number of matrices is given by this ratio. Uh, this ratio basically is due to the input and the output balance in the first stage. So on this side, we have n splitters. Each splitter has key outlets. Okay. So we have a total of key by n outlets here. On this side, uh, we have a certain number of matrices. That is what we want to calculate. Each matrix has n divided by t index. So the balance is n by t because we have n splitters and t is the splitting factor. So this is the number of uh, outlets here. It must be equal to the number of inlets that we have here. So, how many inlets we have? We have R2 matrices in the central stage. That is what we want to calculate. But we know that each matrix has a size that is equal to n divided by t. Okay. is uh, uh, n2. Okay. So when you uh, when, uh, make this uh, ratio, you obtain that you need t square matrices in the central stage. So now we, we are able to build the three, uh, three stage crossbar tree in the general case. Uh, when we have uh, key as a splitting factor, and um, we know that uh, we, must, uh, we must put, uh, and n is uh, the size of the network, so we know that we need uh, key square matrices in the central stage, and uh, the size of each matrix is uh, n divided by key, by n divided by key. For example, in this case, we need four matrices. 
because e is equal to 2 and here we need the 16 okay then uh, this is the calculation of the cost of the overall architecture <coughs> so we have in terms of uh, number of cross points uh, the first term that is uh, key square number of matrices and uh, uh, each matrix is uh, n uh, divided by t by n divided by t so if we assume that each matrix is implemented as a crossbar then we have this term the second term accounts for the number of the, for the splitters and the combiners so we have two stages each stage has uh, n elements, each element has cost uh, key because it's a one by key splitter or a uh, key by one combiner. So in all you have this number as uh, the final cost. <coughs> this uh, architecture is again strictly non-blocking because uh, splitters and combiners are dedicated so when you select a specific uh, inlet and outlet pair you have uh, one uh, splitter that is uh, dedicated to that inlet one combiner that is dedicated to that outlet so they can only be used uh, by that connection and then you have a central stage Actually, central stage elements are shared by more connections because uh, it's not like in the previous in the in the crossbar case where you have simple links. Here you have matrices, but we assume that these matrices are strictly non-blocking, and therefore, even if they are shared, you will not never create a blocking state inside these matrices because, by assumption, they are strictly non-blocking. So you cannot have blocking states in the central stage, you cannot have blocking states in the two first and second, uh, third stage. So you have a strictly non-blocking architecture. What is the best if we want to implement uh, um, uh, the strictly non-blocking architecture using crossbar tree, crossbar or this uh, three-stage uh, uh, architecture, we have to compare the costs, basically. Uh, the EGS network that I have already introduced uh, before, as you can see also from uh, this picture, is a special case of this uh, three-stage crossbar crossbar tree implementation <coughs> and because uh, you have uh, the central matrix that is uh, two by made by two by two switching elements okay if you have two by two switching elements uh, here therefore you must have in the first uh, stage splitters that are one by n divided by two and the combiners that are n divided by two by one in the last stage So once we have uh, uh, determined all the size of the sizes of uh, the matrices, uh, we can write down the cost in terms of uh, crossing points and number of switching elements. And uh, for instance, in terms of cross points, the cost is finally two n squared, which is exactly the same as the cross part three. But in terms of switching elements you have something that is different from the crossbar tree. Okay. So here you, you have a, a difference uh, uh, compared to the crossbar tree. Um, in, the, in this uh, slide, okay, you can uh, skip because it's uh, very uh, technical. Basically, you, there is the cost evaluation of the architectures we have already seen uh, that uh, the 
n by uh, 2 by n and n by t by n. The difference between the first case is that here we assume that these matrices are implemented as EGS networks instead of crossbar tree networks. And so you have uh, total costs that are a little bit different. So this is the final comparison that shows you uh, the cost in the crossbar tree implementation in the EGS. And uh, for in the n by n case, uh, you see that uh, in terms of cross points, the two, N the two implementations are exactly the same. Through the crossbar tree is a two stage architecture, and the ADS is a three stage architecture. In terms of number of switching elements, they are different, and the ADS uh, is more convenient than the crossbar tree. And this is the same table if you consider. And, uh, expansion architecture instead of a squared architecture. Okay. So we have to stop here. Uh, so in the next uh, uh, lessons, we will go on to um, investigate the last parts of this uh, uh, switching networking uh, part.